the name Henry Morgenthal elicits a passionate response in this country, revered as a hero by some, denounced as a murderer by others. You tell young women today that there were bombs or that a lot of women yeah. died in abortions that they don't even, they don't remember. <laughs> no, they don't remember. They don't remember. They yeah. don't, well, they not only do they. Not just remember, they don't know. They don't know. It. Yeah, they don't know about it. Yeah, they don't know. Yucking it up, laughing, smiling over Morgenthaler. Henry Morgenthaler died yesterday. I won't be shedding a tear for this man's passing. I will not mourn. His family will, I'm sure, and that's proper. We love all kinds of people in our lives, despite their flaws. People love me, believe it or not, despite my many flaws. But Henry Morgenthaler is not some ordinary Canadian. He's a man who, more than any other in this country, is responsible for abortion being considered just another choice like dyeing your hair or getting your ears pierced. Look, I know an awful lot of you watching this are not necessarily pro-life, I understand that. But should the life of a man responsible for killing thousands of babies at his own hand and millions in this country as the result of his actions really be celebrated in the House of Commons? Today I rise to pay tribute to Dr. Henry Morgenthaler, who we lost this morning. We extend our deepest sympathies to his family and loved ones. We recognize his courage, his dedication, and the way he changed the course of Canadian history. As a champion for reproductive justice and women's rights, he took our country forward. Unfortunately, even today, access to reproductive services remain unequal, and we must remain vigilant against repeated attempts to roll back these rights. New Democrats will continue Dr. Morgenthaler's fight and the pursuit of equality. In a news release, the NDP actually called Morgenthaler a great man. Justin Trudeau said he was sad at Morgenthaler's passing, sad to hear of Dr. Henry Morgenthaler's death, a crusader for women's reproductive freedom. His contributions will be remembered. I do love these euphemisms. Here's my question, though. Who's going to express sorrow at the deaths of the babies killed at the clinics that bear his name. And there's something odd about New Democrats in the House of Commons praising a man that became wealthy through opening private abortion clinics and having the public pick up the dime. It's a Morgenthaler clinic that sits between the door of my office in Ottawa and the short walk it is to Parliament Hill. MPs walk past it every single day. A private abortion clinic performing an operation, a medical procedure using tax dollars. Yet, those same MPs, MPs like Nikki Ashton or leader Tom Mulcair or Justin Trudeau, well, they would not support a private clinic or hospital opening up to fix your knee or prob perform cancer treatments, but they do for abortion. Abortion is always the exception to every rule. They call it pro-choice and reproductive rights. They don't call it pro-abortion because the people pushing choice, well, they don't want you to think about the choice that you're supporting. Morgenthaler didn't spend his life advocating choice. Choices decided between Kraft or Skippy Peanut Butter, Star Wars or Star Trek, Betty or Veronica. He wasn't advocating for choice. He was advocating for abortion. I met Henry Morgenthaler years ago. I interviewed him for a radio station I once worked for. I don't remember much of what he said or even what I said, but I do remember being creeped out by the man. I wasn't a pro-life activist at the time. I was vaguely pro-life, but... Didn't really spend much time thinking about it. Still, he creeped me out, and he did so because my sense was that this was a man with a very dark soul. It was almost as if he was dead on the inside. Perhaps he was, even if his friends saw him as full of life. He was determined not to be stopped, you know. He, and I think the Holocaust experience was very key to that, because he saw what could happen if you don't stand up for what you believe in. CBC loved Henry Morgenthaler. They love abortion over there, and they hate, and I mean hate, pro-lifers. If you're pro-life at CBC, you keep your head down and your mouth shut. But something Judy Rebick said there makes me wonder, is she right? Was Morgenthaler motivated to work so hard for abortion because of the Holocaust? I told Michael Corrin earlier tonight, I, I think that might be it. Although for a very different and dark reason than Judy Rebick would say. As I said, my sense of Morgenthaler, and I was not antagonistic to me when I met him, not at all. My sense was that this man had died inside and had a very dark soul. It would take a dark soul to spend their life doing what he did. As I said to Corin earlier, many people came away from the Holocaust determined to work for life. If Morgenthaler was motivated by the Holocaust, then it was from the dark side of it, the side that worked for death, because that's what he did. Other people, better people than me, have said, 
that they hope he made peace with his maker before he died, or that they're praying for him. I have trouble saying those words. Henry Morgenthaler had a great impact on Canada, but he was not a great man. He was a mistaken man who brought great evil to this country. Stick around.